Oh God. Oh, every morning when I let the cats out, they are so noisy and oh, sometimes it just hurts my brain because I want peace and quiet and they're just running around and being noisy. But anyways, Sunday morning, I naturally woke up at like 9.30. I kind of like that because I went to bed around 1 last night, so much better than 2 to 3 a.m. And I woke up at a reasonable time, so I just got done making my oatmeal. I've been rather lazy the past few days. I haven't been making oatmeal as much and just kind of winging it. <laughs> Sorry, she's like doing yoga behind me and making noise. Today, I think I plan to go see a movie. It's just that in the past, I would feel kind of lazy to go to see a movie, but nowadays, I'm kind of interested to see the newer ones because I'm running out of old ones to watch, so. Today, I think I want to see I, Tanya. So it's that one, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, which is very limited showings around here and they tend to be at night and I wanna go in the afternoon, so I most likely will not watch that one. There are several that I am interested in watching. I mean, there's like Darkest Hour, there's The Post. So maybe I can go see another movie tomorrow, but for today, I think I will maybe choose I, Tanya because that one I am the most interested in. I'll go see a movie. And then maybe if Korean fried chicken isn't insane, I would like to have some more of that because it is delicious, delicious. And then, really, it's just the same. I will be coming home after that. All right, let's fuel, let's energize, and need some energy for today. Go, come on, let's go. Go, go, go. <laughs> she didn't do the hop sometimes. Sometimes when she's just about to get here, she does like a big hop, big hop. I am finally heading out to Itania. It's around 1.10 right now, and the movie is at 1.30. Is that it right over there? Yeah. I think it's just a movie to see. Ain't no telling what the side effects would be. All these bonds are just people sex to me. And no my kingdom awaits. And they've forgiven my mistakes. I'm coming home. I don't need no fraud. I don't need no drama. Ah, oh, I am incredibly lucky because I am at Korean fried chicken and the parking situation here is really fucking shit but someone pulled out right when I came in and I'm so lucky because otherwise I was mentally prepared for having a really terrible wait time here or something like that but it should take about 10 to 15 minutes for them to make my food otherwise I just finished watching I Tanya it's weird I felt really confident that I would like this movie but no, I, I really, I really wanted the movie to end for maybe the last hour or so. I think a big problem with that movie for me was just that there was no likable character at all. Tanya had personality traits that I definitely liked. Like she was tough. She was assertive. She stuck up for herself in all of the bullshit that happens in figure skating and I actually felt so angry for her when it comes to stuff like losing points for not wearing a nice enough outfit like I can't believe they do that in figure skating I think that's so messed up that they expect you to spend so much money wearing a nice stupid fucking leotard when she had way more skill and they weren't giving her the points she deserved so that part it did feel refreshing to see her stick up for herself and be assertive when everybody else is usually a pushover but aside from that though I feel like a lot of her story was just very tough to it's tough to take in because she was surrounded by awful people and I also didn't really like their filming style they did it like interview and then real life and then like an interview kind of thing so they would show like the different characters looking at the camera and recounting stuff and then they would jump back and forth like that and I didn't really like that style exactly I also didn't like the way they portrayed her mother I love Alice and Janie she was in the way way back and she was so funny in that 
But in this movie, she plays a garbage, worthless, trash person. And every time she started doing something stupid or she said something cruel to her daughter, people in the audience were laughing. And that drove me nuts because why are you laughing at her being a shitty human being? I, I felt like eventually later on, a lot of the lines that she had were for comical purposes at times. And I don't like it when I'm not a big fan of that in movies for sure but yeah I guess aside from that it was really really tough for me to tolerate seeing like certain characters people that she surrounded herself with and them being like really awful people every single character in the movie is not likable so anybody that was on the screen became tough for me to tolerate seeing and then at that point on it got hard to care about the story so that is my review of the movie it was one that I expected to like but did not however Margot Robbie was very very good as Tanya Harding she is a really good actress um I actually knew that already ever since I saw her in Wolf of Wall Street you could tell she has incredible range and she is really good actress so I applaud her for that oh yeah one more quick thing I forgot to mention about the movie that I wanted to say in case people were interested in wanting to see it something that they kind of did frequently throughout the movie also was that even if it was a regular scene they would have the character towards the end of the scene look directly at the camera and talk to it they did that several times and I can understand appreciating that in certain aspects but I don't know if it worked too well in this movie at least I personally didn't like it so I'm not a big fan of that Oh, I'm finally home and I'm starving and this chicken smells so good. Oh, I'm so excited. Let's put my hair back. All right, here's what we have. It's the same one as last time. When I go to edit some of the stuff that I've recorded, namely my thoughts, there are times where I feel like people won't want to hear about this or who would want to hear about me ramble about something like this, but I've also been thinking, you know, these videos are mainly done for myself. I like to just make them. I like to edit these videos and honestly, I love to rewatch my own videos, which seems really weird. For some reason, it's entertaining for me to watch them over. So I often watch them myself and I feel like I really shouldn't worry about talking about my thoughts. Um, if people find them interesting, that's great. If they don't, then it's whatever, right? Uh, nobody forces anybody to watch anything. But I just got done watching The Devil Wears Prada. So I already watched my new movie of the day earlier so I decided to watch something over that I enjoy and this is a movie that I, I like and I like to watch it over once in a while. Um, movies like this, I think the most interesting thing about this movie for me is just watching the responsibilities of a vastly different job compared to mine. Um, I think about this stuff all the time especially since I'm job hunting and my focus every single time when I think about career is just being happy, right? And the thing in tech positions and being in uh, computer science, I feel like you are pretty much going to always be at an eight hour a day desk job. The book is supposedly based on Anna Wintour for Vogue and just that she is a very tough woman and this book is supposedly written by one of her ex-assistants. So being an assistant to an editor-in-chief that is extremely powerful, you could imagine the amount of pressure that she had as well as the high demands that were required of her to, 
you know, assist her in all of her tasks. So the thing is, an assistant does tend to be somewhat of a desk job, but they spend time away from the office running errands. And even though those don't always sound that exciting, I guess there are times where I feel like when you're out of the office, it can be... <laughs> it's just something different, right? Than being in the office. So even just doing something like that, I tend to feel like those are times I should try to cherish. Another reason I am really fond of this movie is because it is about fashion. And I, I like fashion. I feel like fashion is something that I have been clashing with for the past few years. I mentioned this in passing in a previous video, but I guess to kind of go more into it because it's something that I think about very often. I guess when I first moved out, I was paying a lot in rent. So I was paying roughly 50% of my salary in rent and I have actually been doing that for a large part of my life. I've always paid roughly 50 to 60% of my salary per month for rent. And I do that because I live by myself. And I do that because I tend to, I guess I have like a little bit higher standards than what I realistically should have, maybe. So I tend to like to live in places that are a little bit more expensive, but I am willing to sacrifice that money because I know it will make me happy. So having incredible rent costs like that makes it very hard for me to um, feel good about spending money in other avenues. So fashion or clothes, has always been something I have sacrificed as my highest priority. And when I say that, I mean it's just like clothing should be the last thing I buy. And I feel like it can be kind of tough for me at times because I spend so much energy staying away from that stuff even though I love that stuff that when there's sales going on or if I actually go to a website just to browse, I feel a little bit sad because I never let myself indulge in clothing or fashion and I mean I try to think about it in terms of necessity so I have clothes I don't go out very often I don't have many opportunities to wear a nice outfit and go out um, I could wear a nice outfit and dress up to go to the movies like I did today but it's like a three hour outing, two hours of which I'm sitting in a dark theater where nobody will see me. So even if I dressed up for a short outing, like two to three hours, for some reason that to me doesn't feel like it is worthy enough of really dressing up, especially if most of the time that piece of clothing will be sitting in my closet. So it's just, Sometimes it really just does make me sad because I love I love fashion. I love accessorizing. I love dressing up, but I haven't allowed myself to buy clothing in so long. And even if I have bought clothing, it was like once a year, twice a year maybe. And honestly, there are still times that I would love to just splurge on clothing. I honestly don't know. I can't find a balance for something like this. I really do just spend all my time at home, so I don't know how I could ever justify buying clothing. And I tend to have more expensive taste, so if I were to buy something, it would be kind of pricey. 9.30, I am going to exercise because I feel like I'm on a good routine lately of exercising the past few days, and I haven't been eating as much junk minus the chicken. So I'm feeling kind of confident that my body is going in a direction that I like. So I cannot just stop, I have to keep going. So today I still need to exercise. And then after that, I think I will read some. And if I have the energy, I might watch another new movie that I haven't seen, a French one. One involving drama and history. So hopefully I get to that. But I don't want to neglect reading too much because I haven't been reading as many pages as I would have liked. 
I think there is a movie coming out next week wide release called Hostiles with Christian Bale and Rosamund Pike. I am really looking forward to that movie because I am really interested in watching movies surrounding Native Americans. So it looks like it'll be good. I love Rosamund Pike. She is so good. And Christian Bale, I guess I'm kind of neutral towards. I mean, he's a good actor. It seems like it has a promising premise and I love watching that time period. So I really hope that it is somewhere local next week so I can go see it. Hi, I decided to. Wow, there's a bird over there making her excited. But I decided to come out to Santa Isabel again. I decided to come out to the one trail that is also in the open preserve in Santa Isabel. And it, it, ooh, horse, horse tracks. But it is one that is not wide enough or it has like gates and stuff that I don't feel like rangers come out here. So I parked and there was only one other truck. So I am really happy about that. And that means that she has off-leash freedom and I don't have to stress about coming across a ranger. So, okay, going to put this away and enjoy this. Come, good. Good girl. Break, good. I'm almost to the top and once you get up there, it's flat, so. <laughs> it's also pretty hot, there's no shade. But it's no biggie. I can do this. It's exercise after all. Break. Good. Let's go. <laughs> You're such a bad jumper. Come. Good. Good girl. Down. Good girl. Good job. Sit. Good. Break. Okay, I'm done with my hike. It's three o'clock and I think I'm going to stop by the motorcycle store before I head back just to see what the pricing is like if I finance one. So they are still doing deals because it is not quite riding season yet. I believe it is springtime. So there are still some big discounts on the R3, which is the one that I want. So good hike. I came across a few people didn't get any trouble from any of them. So before I close out this vlog, I wanted to take the time to talk about France. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It is a French movie that I watched yesterday and I loved it. I was in tears throughout the entire movie and I actually purposefully didn't record my reaction to watching it because my eyes were swollen from crying so much so I cried a bunch last night when I watched it, last night being Sunday night. And then this morning when I woke up, my eyes were still swollen for a couple hours, even into hiking. So I couldn't record until everything settled down up here. But, you know, I wrote up a full post about it on my blog, but it does include spoilers. So I can't really talk about it too much. Um, all I can say is that it is like drama, history, romance, and it was, to me, it felt like such a beautiful story, and the performances were so good, very touching, very emotional, and I now feel like I have a uh, new French actor that I can try to follow. His name is Pierre Nini. Surprisingly, this French director I've actually seen before. I watched this movie in the house, which I decided to watch a long time ago because of Kristen Scott Thomas, and it was pretty interesting. So it's pretty neat to see that I'm not completely new to this director's work and that I've seen it, but now it's time to kind of branch out and see what else he has done because he seems very talented. France moved me so much, I can't even really describe how much I cried last night. So if people like that kind of genre, I highly recommend it. 
Um, the movie is actually dominantly in black and white. There are very few moments that he bleeds color into it, but honestly, the black and white did not bother me at all. And I think it is a, such a beautiful movie. Definitely recommend it.